what's happening everybody ben here and today i am very very excited to share with you this story so about a month ago we purchased a empty cargo van with the goal of converting it into a camper van now we're not going to be using this vehicle to live in like a lot of people do but we are going to be using it to travel across the country explore new places while always having a place to sleep at night and also it's very important to have enough room to be able to carry all of our gear and equipment that we need to do all the different activities we love doing like last weekend when we went mountain biking one day hiking the next day and then to the beach the following day as you can imagine when you're doing a lot of different activities like biking surfing, hiking, skateboarding. It's very difficult to fit all the equipment needed for that stuff in a standard vehicle. So for the past couple years, we've been doing these trips with all this gear in my uh, Toyota Tacoma and also trying to camp in the bed of that at night. So it's very difficult to do that and keep all of your equipment safe because the bikes are on the back of the hitch. Um, so when you go hiking, I mean, you're worried about people stealing your bikes and the surfboards on the roof. and worried about people walking away with that but the greatest part about the van is how everything is self-contained within it and it keeps a secure place for your stuff and it gives you a great place to sleep at night you can sleep anywhere you can sleep in a parking lot a campground it's just a great alternative for people who like to travel like we do so let's rewind back to day one when we first brought the van home and it was nothing but an empty shell I want to take you guys with us as we transform this empty van into something that is functional and practical for our needs. So let's get this build started. The very first thing we had to do was remove all these plastic wall coverings. Uh, we had to expose the bare metal that was underneath in order to make plans for our insulation of the van. All right, here it is without all that plastic uh, wall covering on it. But before putting insulation up, we decided to put on this stuff called Kill Mat. It's a sound deadening material that helps reduce vibrations and road noise. It's super easy to put on. All you have to do is cut it to size, peel off the backing, and then stick it to the wall. I also used a metal roller to make sure there was no air bubbles trapped behind the sound deadening material. Once all the sound editing was installed, it was time to move on to something a little bit more difficult. Insulation. Insulation is a heavily debated topic, to say the least, in the, in the van world, if you would. This is a controversial, 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 I don't know, subject, to say the least, because Everyone has different opinions on why to use a certain type of material over another type of material. In the end, we decided to go with one inch thick poly iso boards. This was the material that met all the needs that we wanted for our specific van. It may not be the best for everyone, but I believe it's going to be the best for our particular van build. To start out with the insulation, we had to take some really good measurements of each panel that we wanted to cut. Once we got those measurements, we transferred them onto the sheets of polyiso board and then cut each piece out with a razor blade. Next, we used some 3M Super 90 adhesive. We sprayed it around the outside of the board and also onto the wall, which we were going to be applying the board to. Once both surfaces were covered in adhesive, we let it dry for about 30 seconds to a minute. It depended on how much sunlight the material was being exposed to until it became tacky to the touch. Once it was tacky, we just placed the board right up onto the wall and held it there for a little while until the adhesive bonded and we could let go. This seemed to be plenty enough to hold the boards to the walls. So all the larger panels that you see here were relatively easy to install. Once those were all put into place, the more tedious and difficult task began. All right, so for these top cavities, this is what I'm doing here. Just cutting pieces and kind of just putting them in place. And then I'm gonna go ahead and throw some glue on, but um, this is one thing I wanna show you. This is pretty, pretty cool here. So it's really curved, so you're gonna have to score the insulation for it to fit up right in here. And it's just gonna fit in like a puzzle. And I'm gonna just kinda keep doing this 
for the whole thing. These sections were extremely tedious, but knocking them out in small chunks really helped um, get the thing done in the long run. But one thing I would recommend is to definitely wear some gloves when you're doing this, otherwise your fingers will be so sliced up like mine were. After a hard day's work, it was definitely time for a nice relaxing break. Alright, now for the next part of the build, and this is perhaps the thing I've been secretly dreading the most uh, ever since we got the van, and that is installing the Max Air roof vent fan. Now the first step, obviously, is to measure the hole that you're going to cut. It's a 14 by 14 inch hole, I measured it and then taped everything off. Once I was absolutely sure I had the right measurement, I measured so many times, it's ridiculous. It was time to drill into the metal and that is the point of no return because now you have little holes in your roof. So <laughs> I was fully committed at that point. To start out with drilling the holes, I drilled with a small drill bit and then stepped it up and increased the size gradually until it was eventually big enough to fit the jigsaw blade in that I was going to use to connect all four holes. all four holes I went up on the roof and basically what I did was connect the dots I used this adapter to draw a straight line between all four holes once all four holes were connected and I had a nice line that I would be cutting them, I went inside the van and put up a trash bag to catch any metal shavings that would be falling when I'm making this cut and now for the moment I've all been waiting for cue dramatic music And then after that, we're gonna throw a little spray paint on there in order to prevent any rust from forming in the future. All right, now I gotta take all this, all the tape off and then prep the surface for the fan adapter. Put a little isopropyl alcohol on there, tape around the edges, and then we're going to go ahead and put three beads of 3M window weld around the perimeter of the fan adapter and then stick it right up on the roof. <laughs> Once the roof adapter is in place, you gotta let it dry for a little while. I was lucky enough to let it dry overnight because we did not have any rain in the forecast. After the roof adapter is on, you gotta put some bugle tape onto the fan housing. Once it's, the bugle tape is on, you stick it right onto the roof adapter and you let that bond together. Because the sheet metal on the roof is so thin, I built a wood frame out of furring strips in order to have something for the screws to drive into and really get a good bite. Once the wood frame was in place, I went to the roof and drilled holes on all the areas where I was gonna put screws through the housing, through the fan adapter, through the roof, and into the wood furring strip frame. I was very cautious to not over tighten these screws because you do not want to crack the plastic fan housing that you're screwing through. It would probably be a good idea just to use a hand screwdriver to get the last bit of the screw through. Once all the screws were snug, it was time to put lap sealant over top of all the heads of the screws and around the base of the entire housing, adapter, and everything. That way you're creating a watertight seal around everything. It probably would have been a good idea for me to tape off before I put this lap seal on because it's particularly messy, but I didn't do that and no one's really gonna be looking at the roof of my van anyway, so a nice line isn't that important. Now it's time to put the fan in place and then throw the couple provided screws 
through the housing into the fan itself. Once it's on, voila, you're ready to wire it up. Now how is the fan going to be run? For our power needs, we decided to go with a device called a Goal Zero Yeti 1400. What this is, is basically a generator, but instead of running it off of gasoline, it runs off electricity. And to get that electricity, you can charge it with the wall in your house, you can charge it off the AC adapter in your car, and you can also charge it with solar panels that you mount on the roof of your van. Have not done that yet, but that is in the future plans. The Yeti 1400 is basically a all-in-one system. You don't have to buy your batteries, solar charge controller, and um, inverter and all that. It's just everything in one and it's pretty much plug and play. All right, so now that the fan had some power going to it, the next step was to build a bed. Uh, for this, I went ahead and measured up from the floor to the part where I wanted the bed support. The measurement I came up with was 38 inches, and that was after doing a lot of dry fitting with the bike and taking into account future insulation from the floor and trays that would be holding the bikes. So what I did first was custom 2x4 to size and then drilled into the supports where I was going to screw it into. In order to connect the 2x4 to the wall, I used 2 inch long sheet metal screws, Boom. which in the front of the van, they, they went into the supports extremely easily and I was able to put four in as you can see. Um, but as I moved to the rear of the van, the supports were much thicker, the sheet metal was much thicker, so I was only able to get one hole drilled on each side because the holes took incredibly long to drill and I was breaking drill was left and right. So I came up with an alternative plan of adding some support legs that would attach directly to the bed support rail. In order to do that, I cut some notches into the tops of the 2x4s. That way they would fit securely in place. Once the legs were cut in, I confirmed that they fit into place. I went ahead and removed a D-ring bolt that was in the bottom of the van and with that bolt I drilled a hole into the same location of the 2x4 and thread the bolt right through the 2x4 and then back into the van support. This was an incredibly sturdy way to attach the 2x4 to the wall and it was already a pre-existing hole so I didn't have to drill anything into it. Once that was in place I tacked some screws into the top and everything was rock solid. I was already pretty confident that the front of the bed support rail was sawed just into the sheet metal, but just to add a little extra support, I decided to cut some extra support legs and attach it to the front as well. For this, I just used a pocket hole drill and then threw some screws up into the bed support rail um, and then went ahead and attached um, more sheet metal screws into the bottom um, directly from the support leg into the sheet metal of the van. Now that everything was screwed down and all secure, the bed frame was becoming very solid and I was definitely confident that the bed was going to be sturdy and not fall apart as soon as I laid on it. That was a good feeling so I went ahead and started to cut the horizontal slats which the mattress would eventually rest on. So I was going back and forth between using slats and plywood in the bed. I couldn't really decide, but in the end I went with slats because my thought process was that if there's gaps between each piece of wood, the mattress will be able to breathe a little bit better and maybe there's a less of a chance of it becoming moldy or stinking up the van. For the mattress, I picked up a six inch memory foam mattress. Um, the company is Lucid and I got that on Amazon for 160 bucks. Um, once I unboxed it and let it air out a little bit, uh, I threw it in the van and it fit perfect. Um, I was unsure if the bed being so thin would like kind of sag down in between the, um, the horizontal slats of, of the bed. Um, however, once I threw it up and tested it and laid on the bed, I figured out that was not going to be an issue. So. That was my only concern with not going to apply what is that the bed would sag between the slats and 
so far it has had zero issues with doing that. All right, now that the bed was done, I had to find a way to secure all of our gear. Um, for the bikes, I used these hitch mounts and just mounted them to a 2x8. Now eventually I'm planning to build some slide out trays that you've probably seen in a lot of other van builds for mountain biking. That would make it a lot easier to put the bikes in and out of the van. But for now I'm just doing this because I want to have the van ready for our weekend trip and I'm bringing the bikes with us so I gotta find out a quick way to store them. So this should work in the meantime. All you gotta do is pop the wheel off, slide the bike in and lock it down for your quick release. Now the first bike's in, I'm going to do the same thing for the second bike, and then it's time to load up the van with the rest of the gear and then hit the road on the first trip. So we got the van loaded up, we're on the road exploring the Shenandoah Mountains in Virginia. Uh, our first stop is going to be Massanut and Bike Park, then we're hitting a really cool hiking trail called Old Rag, and then the following day we're going to go to Virginia Beach to, you know, hang out on the beach, chill, and do a little bit of surfing. Not that there's probably gonna be any waves, but it's just still be cool. Now, let me give you a quick tour of the inside of the van, how we're using it. And like I've already mentioned before, this is not a final project. This is just all kind of a dry run to get a feel for where we're gonna to wanna to build things and what is gonna be necessary for us to build in the future in the van. So this is where the van's at now, so I hope you enjoy it. We got the bikes mounted in here. We got both mounts. Just two of these Delta um, mounts, or you get them on Amazon. They're like, I want to say they're like 15 bucks or something like that. I can't remember exactly. Um, I thought this is probably my favorite way of mounting the tires. Is you just take one of these like bungee clip things. It's just like a little quick release tab, and you just wrap around the frame of the bike and hold the tires right next to the bike so I don't have to find like a really good spot to put them because I was putting them over here and then I was putting one underneath and it was just kind of a pain to get them in so this has worked the best so far for the limited amount of time I've used it kind of another cool little thing here I just had this laying around we had these um, foam um, they're inch and a half thick foam mats. I just had these in my basement and I don't really use them anymore. So um, I'm just like, let me just throw them, throw them in here and see if I can get have a good place to catch any, you know, mud or water that might drip off the bikes or the surfboards. I've got my helmets dangling here. It's not a good place to let them air out. Um, full face down in here. Just got camelbacks. Um, here's a solar shower that hooks right up onto the top. Working your way up to the front of the van, you can see everything's just in containers, kind of laying around everywhere. Now, up here we got a nice little fan. This adds some extra airflow and circulation to the van and keeps you really cool at night. On the side of the bed here, we have just some extra space, this empty space where I just throw some sleeping bags and extra pillows, things like that. And then sitting right here is uh, the generator. So, um, as you can see, maybe right now it's at 29%. This was using it for three nights, I believe. One, two, three, three nights. And it used 70% ish of the battery. So, it did really well. And I don't have any solar panels hooked up to it yet. So, um, I'm really impressed with how that generator is doing and how it's conserving electricity. And from there, we got the most important thing um, the toilet. You can buy these really cool Ziploc bags that they unzip and then a like, little garbage bag pops out of them and goes over the lip of the toilet. It's pretty nice because you can just seal everything up and it doesn't stink up your whole van. And for privacy, you know, um, so we just threw this, this bungee cord um, up here and connected it to over here. And then all I did was took a old sheet and just, this works perfect actually. Just slides it out. When you're ready to go to sleep and you want to turn the lights on back here and no, so no one can see back into the back of the van, boom. It's basically a little, nice little curtain. Pretty much it for where the van's at now. Very soon in the near future, I'm gonna be doing a lot of other stuff to it, such as adding nice flooring, some walls, ceiling, uh, stuff like that to make the van start looking a lot nicer. Hey guys, thank you for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this and want to see more, make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you liked it, let me know in the comments below. If 
you have any questions, feel free to ask. I may or may not know the answer to the question, but I will do my best to get back to you and 